Dr. Mark is, is a term we use in medicine called a hundred day cough, uh, a whooping cough. Now, is that on the rise, the decline? Uh, and we vaccinate kids for it, so how can we even concerned about it now? Whooping cough, or pertussis, was a serious respiratory tract infection 50 years ago. We started vaccinating children for whooping cough, pertussis, many years ago, and for a while we saw a very nice decrease in the episode of whooping cough in children. And in fact, in very young children, it's uncommon to see whooping cough. However, what we've seen is two things. First, there are occasional children who do not get protected by the vaccine that we commonly administer. And that's true for all vaccines. No vaccine is perfect. These children can get whooping cough. We also know that there are several other types of viruses and even bacteria that can give you a disease that looks like whooping cough, even though it's not pertussis. These bacteria and viruses we do not have immunizations for, and thereby we can have a disease that's called whooping cough, even though it's being caused by a different organism. We also know that vaccines don't last forever. Generally speaking, the effect of the vaccine wears off over a five to ten year period. After the patient has been vaccinated as a child, by the time they're an adolescent or young adult, that vaccine benefit has worn off. And so some patients are still at risk for developing whooping cough at that point. However, instead of the standard whoop that we used to think about, what they have is just prolonged periods of this nagging, harsh cough lasting up to three months. Without question, whooping cough is a potentially life-threatening illness, especially in the very young. Whooping cough leads to severe inflammation of the airways, can lead to blockage of airflow to the lungs, can rob the brain of oxygen, and can, if not properly cared for, lead to death. Therefore, it is still very important that children be vaccinated for pertussis during their, during their childhood and infancy to prevent this serious infection from making a big comeback. There have been some parents who have refused vaccines and their kids actually got whooping cough. Did, did that happen? Oh, absolutely. There have been a number of cases in the literature where refusal of vaccination by individual parents and even by certain communities have led to epidemics of this infection to come back. We know that bacteria causing whooping cough is out there. We've not eliminated it from the world, and it will come back very rapidly if we let our guard down and stop vaccinating our children. In fact, in England, there was a period where they would stop vaccinating kids, and the epidemics came back, and England said, oh, we're going to go back and do it again. We've seen this over and over again whenever that situation occurs. The minute you stop vaccinating, this infection returns with serious consequences. There's a new vaccine target for kids over 11 that now we now can give a pertussis vaccine to older kids. Is that true? There it is, and it is a vaccine which has eliminated many of the concerns and side effects of previous vaccines, and it allows you to boost those children after that 10-year window has come whereby the original vaccination series effect has worn off. Young mothers who get pregnant, who have no protection against whooping cough, get whooping cough from pregnancy, is that a problem? It certainly can be a problem. It could lead to a decrease in oxygen levels in the blood and lead to problems with the developing fetus. So sometimes people are being treated for asthma or some viral pneumonia, and in actuality, a prolonged cough could be whooping cough. It certainly can be. And I think the message here is that if you have a symptom that persists and it's not responding to the first line of treatment being given, reevaluate the patient and make sure you're treating the proper disease. A simple blood test checking for an antibody of pertussis doesn't mean you have the disease. Is that true? That is very true. There are certain tests that can help diagnose this disease and other tests that do not. Any patient who's been given a vaccination at any time in their life will have some antibody in their bloodstream for pertussis. That means the patient has had a normal vaccine response. 
the only way to document pertussis is to actually try to culture the organism or look for evidence of it in the nose or in the secretions. What tests can they do in the secretions that's very reliable today? Well, they do special genetic DNA tests to take a look for the genes of the bacteria in the secretions. In this way, we can see the bacteria has been there and we know has caused the infection. You can also do cultures which can let the bacteria grow, but this is a tricky bacteria to grow and we aren't always successful in isolating it on these samples. If someone did get a pertussis-like disease, how would you approach the treatment, say, in a young adult? The treatment would require a combination approach. Antibiotics are always administered, but antibiotics are more important to prevent the spread of this infection to other people. The problem is once the serious cough develops, the antibiotics are very limited in their ability to relieve this symptom. There are other types of medications which can help relieve the spasm and inflammation which causes the cough, and these medications have to be individualized for every single patient. Thank you, Dr. Marcus.